European Parliament will get underway shortly in Brussels, with lawmakers setting out their ambitions for the EU budget before negotiating changes with the bloc's presidency. Today's debate will be the first test of the historic 1.8 trillion euro package agreed to by EU leaders earlier this week. Parliament President David Sussley warned yesterday that MEPs won't sign off on cuts to migration and asylum policies. Well, with more on what we can expect from today's parliamentary debate, let's cross now to our correspondent, Shona Murray, who's in Brussels. Uh, Shona, good to see you there. Well, despite what David Sosoli said yesterday, MEPs aren't really going to oppose this, are they? This is effectively a rubber stamping exercise, isn't it? Well, that's a key question, Tokes. We know that Parliament is unhappy with the, some of the cuts that have taken place, some of the things that have been agreed. And we know from David Sassoli's speech yesterday, his statement saying he wants repurposing on certain areas like rule of law and in relation to migration. But let's get into it now with Sophie Interfeld, uh, Dutch MEP for Democracy 66. Sophie, first of all, you're a Dutch MEP, so I want to ask you a little bit about your own government's performance throughout the debate. How, how do you assess it? As was direct about throughout the negotiations, I should say. Well, let me, let me say that on the one side, I'm, I'm very pleased that the Dutch government as well has supported the final package. Uh, at the same time, uh, I would have wished for our Prime Minister to be more constructive and less, because I think ultimately everybody wants... Uh, a strong budget, a strong response to the crisis. Uh, and of course, we want a strong economy and, and reforms. But there are different ways of making a point. So today, the MEPs are filled with determination about ch making some changes. Uh, tell us what are your priorities? Well, first of all, I think restoring the cuts that have been made by the Council in areas like uh, research, the, the health programme, uh, some parts of the climate policies, I mean, our, our top priorities, it's really incomprehensible that those were the, the, the precise victims of this, uh, of this fight in the Council. Uh, the other uh, thing is, of course, the rule of law. Uh, it's, it's really unacceptable that there isn't stronger language, clearer language rather, uh, about the rule of law. It has to be very clear that uh, if a government wants to be eligible for EU funding, then uh, they have to comply with our standards uh, as laid down in the treaties. And I think it's also important to underline uh, that we will never cut the funds for citizens, for SME, for local authorities, for NGOs, uh, but it will not be channeled through governments if they don't comply with our rule of law standards. So just looking at the areas where you say were cut, that you want repurposed, how do you propose to do that given that there were, you know, what was agreed in the budget is the amount of money which is limited essentially by, by member states? Well, but we're the other budget authority. We have to give our consent. So many people thought that, um, you know, Tuesday morning there was a deal. No, that was the position of the council. Now Parliament is going to take position because without our consent, there is no financial package. Um, so we will use that position to, uh, to force some changes. Uh, and I do think those areas, research, health, climate, are really top priorities. And that is what par Parliament will show. So this is the key question then, Sophie, isn't it? You have the authority to give, your, give, give the consent. But given how difficult the negotiations were and how important this moment is, will Parliament actually vote it down if the changes aren't made? Look, you know, we have that powers in the treaty, so we also have a responsibility as European Parliament. We have been voted by over 200 million voters last, uh, last year, um, so we have a responsibility. We're not just signing on the dotted line, we have a responsibility to our voters. And I, I think we also need to talk about the, 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 the message, because deciding with uh, the intergovernmental method with unanimity clearly doesn't work anymore. And what is funny is that the, the, the European coal and steel community that entered into force exactly 68 years ago today, um, you know, they had the power to levy taxes and to borrow money on the markets and they decided with majority voting. So, you know, uh, they were smarter than we are, and I think we need to reform the system as well. OK, well, we'll see, and we'll look, obviously, forward to that long debate today. But, Sophie Interveld, thank you very much for joining us. And back to you in the studio. Shona, thank you for that. And don't forget, we'll have live coverage of that extraordinary debate coming from the European Parliament later.